Hello everyone and welcome to ABB Robot Studio Tutorials. In this tutorial we first explain how to add an end effector or a gripper to the robot model. Then we explain how to define a path that the robot end effector needs to follow. And finally we explain how to quickly write a program that will move the end effector along the predefined path. And here's a demonstration of everything that you will learn in this video tutorial. Over here, I define the path consisting of four target points. One, two, three, four. And if I click over here, my robot will move along this path. More precisely, in this ABB Robot Studio tutorial, we explain how to open a new project and add a robot to our workspace and to our project. Then we explain how to insert and attach a gripper to a robot model. A gripper in robotics literature is also known as an end effector or a tool. Then we explain how to create a virtual controller for controlling the robot motion. Then we explain how to use a teach method to create a path for moving the robot and finally, we explain how to quickly program the robot such that the end effector moves along the created path. So let's immediately start. Once you open Robot Studio, you should see this screen. If you don't see this screen, then you need to click on New. Then click on Project, and over here we will create our new project. Do not select this option, Include a Robot and Virtual Controller, since we will include them in our program manually. Then click on create and be patient. Okay, after some time you will see this main workspace screen. The first step is to add the robot to our project. To do that, click here on ABB library and then over here for illustration purposes I will select IRB 120 and click on OK. So here is our robot. The next step is to learn how to zoom, rotate and pan the view. To zoom the view or to zoom the robot, simply scroll forward or backward the middle mouse button. Another approach for zooming in or zooming out is simply to hold the middle mouse button and to move the mouse left or right to zoom in or zoom out. Next, let's learn how to rotate the view. To rotate the view, press and hold Ctrl, Shift, then press the left mouse button and move the mouse left or right. Again, to rotate, press and hold Ctrl, Shift, left mouse button and move left or right. And finally, to pan the view, press Ctrl, press the left mouse button and then simply move left or right. Okay, let's continue. The next step is to learn how to add a gripper or an end effector to our project and how to attach the gripper or the end effector to our robot. Okay, to do that we need to click here on import library and over here we have several options. You have an option to use for example a smart gripper or you can click over here or you can select this my tool that looks like a welding tool. In this video tutorial I will select the smart gripper. So click here on smart gripper and click on it and click OK. Now you can see the smart gripper over here. That is you can see its contour. Also under this option over here mechanisms you can also see the smart gripper servo finger. The next step is to attach this gripper or the end effector to our robot. So how to do that? There are several ways to attach the gripper. The easiest approach is actually to click over here on Smart Gripper Servo Fingers, then do the right click and then scroll all the way down and find this option Attach To. And over here you can have base, link 1, link 2, link 3, link 4, link 5, link 6. However, Let's select the first option, that is, let's attach the gripper to our robot and click over here. And then 
you will be asked, do you want to update the position of Smart Gripper servo fingers? Of course you want to do that and magic happens. Here is our gripper. Let's now rotate and let's see it. Looks nice. Very good. Perfect. Let's continue. The next step is to add a virtual controller to a robot such that we can actually control the robot. To do that, click over here on virtual controller and click on from layout. And over here, select the default option, use this robotware, click on next, and finally click on finish. And now here you should be patient and you should see the controller status. Currently it's red since we still didn't complete the setup, just wait, be patient, and you will see green. Green means that we can actually use our virtual control. Okay, so the next step is to learn how to define a path. Before defining a path, it's very important to understand a few things. So if you click over here, you can see the instruction template. We have move J and move L. These are the commands for moving the joint, that is move J is for moving the robot and moving the specific joint or in a joint mode, and we have move L. Move L, that means that we are moving the robot linearly. Okay, that is we will specify the start point, the end point, and then move L will move from the start to the end point. Okay, so make sure that this option is Selected, then over here you have the speed. Usually I like to use V150, this means velocity of 150 millimeters per second. Over here you have a zone. Zone means basically, roughly speaking, some kind of zone of approaching the point. For example, if you're going from one point to another and in between you have a single point, zone means a radius of approaching that point. Very loosely speaking, we will later on precisely define the zone. So let's select fine. Okay, the next step is actually to teach the robot to follow a path. Let me first rotate the view and zoom out so you can see the robot. So let's define a path. How to define a simple path? Well, over here you have several options. To create a path, click over here on Paths and Targets, then Expand Controller, then explain, Expand T-Rob1, and you will see this option Paths and Procedures. Click over here, do the right click, and click on Create Path. OK. Now let's expand this window over here. Once you created the path over here, you can select this option to teach instructions. The teach instruction means that we will define our path by using several points. That is, we will move the robot to points and then we will memorize this, these points. This approach is called the teach method. So let's use this method. Okay, first of all, let's select this option such that we can move the robot. To move the robot, simply select the end effector and over here, you can simply select these arrows to move along X, Y, or Z axis. So let's move the robot here. And then look what happens now. Okay. Now, over here, click on Teach Instruction. And before I'm, I will actually click on the Teach Instruction, I have to mention the following. After I click on Teach Instructions, you will see that something will change over here and over here. So look what will happen. If I click on Teach Instruction, and if I click on Yes, something will change over here. Uh -huh. So let's see what, what changes. Now, you can see the path over here, and you can see over here that I have Move L Target 10. So something is being defined over here. So what is defined? now? Let me for a second move the robot up a little bit and or down or let me just move it let me move it like this so I can show you so you can see something over here. What is this? Aha, uh -huh. this is actually a point and you can see target 
10. So we just memorized a single point on our path. Okay, so this will be the starting point of our path. Over here, make sure that the velocity is good, right? And make sure that this fine option is good. And don't play with these two other options. Good. So let's define a new point on the path. To do that, make sure that this is selected. Okay. Then, again, select the end effector and move the robot. So let's move the robot a little bit down. Okay. And let's memorize this point. To do that, click over here on Teach Instruction and click on Yes. And you can see another point is defined. And over here we have the instruction, meaning move L, move linearly to target 20. That is to this point. And you can already see the path. You can see that we start from here. This yellow line with an arrow represents the path and we end here. Okay, now let's test this path. To test this path, click here, then do the right click. Actually, sorry, you need to click here, path 10, do the right click, and click on move along path. So let's see what will happen. Here, be careful, we go in this point, and then we go to the next one, and that's it. So let's do it again, move along path. Okay, we start from here, and we move here. Good. So let's define a new point. To do that, make sure that this option is selected then. Click on the end effector, move the end effector up, and let's memorize this point by clicking over here. And here's the new point. You can see target 30 is defined, and we have an instruction move L, meaning move linearly, to target 30. Now you can double click to see this instruction. And you can double click here to see target 30, target 20, and target 10. Okay, simple as that. Now, I would like to close this path. So how to close the path? The easiest approach is to simply click here on this first instruction, then copy this. So do Control C, Control V, and click on Yes. Now, what I will do, I will select this second instruction that I just created and move it all the way at the end. So move it over here and you can see what happened. The path is closed. So we go here, here, here and here. So let's test this path. Click over here, do the right click and click on move along the path. And here it is. Congratulations. This is your first path that you just created by using a teach method.